today I want to talk to you a little bit about my favorite medium for my camera that I have ever had the pleasure of using, the Mamiya 7 II. The Mamiya 7 II is a 6x7 medium format rangefinder camera, and for years now, it's been a secret weapon of mine. But before we get into the details as to why I love the Mamiya 7 II so, so much, let's talk about why I'm out taking photos today in the first place. We are headed up to a place called Cape Disappointment, which, spoiler alert, is the opposite of disappointing. Cape Disappointment is this beautiful location on the southern border of Washington. The view includes massive ocean cliffs, aggressive waves, and a lighthouse standing strong in the background. Today at Cape Disappointment, it's supposed to be extra special because there's an event called the King Tide going on. The moon revolves around the Earth once every month, causing monthly patterns in the tide, and the Earth revolves around the sun every year, causing yearly patterns in the tide. King tide happens when these monthly and yearly patterns coincide to produce the highest and lowest tides of the year. Essentially, it means there's going to be some big waves that would make for some epic photography. Me and my friend Brian drove up from Portland, Oregon for the day to try and capture some images of this natural phenomenon. To document the day, I brought along my Sony FX3 with a 24-70mm to G Master lens along with the 70-200mm to for some closer shots. As for photography, I strictly brought the Mamiya 7 II with an 80mm f4 lens. No digital today, strictly sticking to medium format. The drive up to Cape Disappointment is absolutely beautiful. It was about two hours from Portland and you go through a bunch of old coastal towns and some really interesting bridges with some old school architecture and it's just a really peaceful, serene drive all the way up to Washington. We got this really crazy fog going on the whole drive up there. I don't know if there was something about the weather that day or if it's always like that, but, but the Pacific Northwest really was showing its true colors with this moody fog and had to document some of that on the way up. Now let's talk a little bit about the Mamiya 7 II, what this video is all about. The Mamiya 7 II is a medium format rangefinder system manufactured by Mamiya, a Tokyo based company that you might know now as Phase 1. It was introduced in 1995 and discontinued in 2014. It was the successor to the Mamiya 6 and the Mamiya 7 and it boasts interchangeable lenses with leaf shutters, features automatic parallax correction, aperture priority, auto exposure, exposure correction, multi-exposures as well as a self-timer. Basically it can do everything you would ever need a medium format camera to do in a really compact body. One major improvement that the 7.2 had over the Mamiya 7 was its lightweight body construction and compact size. This allows users to freely use the camera without any extra weight and bulk that medium format cameras usually have. I don't know if you guys have ever held like a Mamiya RZ67 or an RB67. They're extremely heavy and they feel like a massive brick and the Mamiya 7 does not do that. It's meant to be much more compact and easy to carry around. And this means that the Mamiya 7 II could be easily taken for long go on the shoots, long trips, long adventures, and a professional camera that worked great for portrait and landscape photography alike. Now, I did get very lucky with this camera. I found my Mamiya at a camera shop in the UK while I was out on tour with Panic of the Disco in 2015. It actually came with a Contax G2 as well in a package deal for around 2,500 USD, which I did not know how lucky I actually got until soon after the prices of film just started skyrocketing. And nowadays you cannot find a Mamiya 7.2 for anywhere under $4,500. So to get both the Mamiya 7.2 and the Contax G2 in a package deal for that low of a price is very lucky. Now, $4,500 is an insane price. Don't get me wrong. It's insane for any camera, but especially a medium format film camera. I will say after using different variations of medium format cameras and testing out a lot of different film cameras throughout my career, I always come back to the Mamiya 7.2. There's something special about the build quality the rangefinder system, and the clean aesthetic that not only the camera has, but the images it produces. Personally, some of my favorite film work has come from the Mamiya 7.2, from taking it on tour with Lord to documenting some of my personal travels. It really can do everything I ever wanted in a camera. So what's a rangefinder camera? Uh, rangefinder cameras come in all shapes of different sizes, such as the Leica M series or the Contax G series. But what actually makes a rangefinder style camera a rangefinder? Well, let's talk about it. A rangefinder camera is a body type that has a rangefinder glass viewport that you look through and that is not directly looking through the lens of the camera. It's kind of off-centered from the lens of the body. When you look through the rangefinder, you will see frame lines based on what type of lens that you're using as well as two slightly overlapping images in the middle of the glass. 
When you move the focus ring on your lens, those two overlapping images slowly match up, and once they're matched up, the photo's in focus. The benefit of a rangefinder camera is that you get a great depth of field, meaning that your shots are more likely to be in focus, and the lenses are generally built with higher quality because they don't have to worry about any compensation on an SLR or things like that. Today, I decided to shoot some Portrait 800, which is a film stock produced by Kodak, and it's great for these moody conditions in the Pacific Northwest. Also, the 800 speed of film comes in handy because the landscapes here tend to get a little bit darker with all this cloud coverage, so Pacific Northwest and Portrait 800 really do go hand in hand. This is the Astoria Bridge. It's something to marvel at in itself. It basically carries the section of the US Route 101 from Astoria to Washington. It opened in 1966 and it's the longest truss bridge in North America. When you're driving on this thing, it just keeps going and going and going and it feels a bit surreal being on a bridge over the water for that long. Now the King Tide was absolutely insane this day i mean there were so many photographers here and i was a bit confused when i pulled up as to why so many people wanted to witness this king tide but as soon as i got down and set up my tripod and started taking some videos i quickly realized how special this event really was these massive waves smashing into the side of this cliff and the huge waves it would create along with the white foam contrasting the black background of the rocks and the lighthouse in the distance really made for some spectacular imagery and both for photo and video. Um, I really love these photos I took with the Mamiya 7.2. I'm very impressed with the dynamic range that this camera is able to pull off. Obviously film has a huge dynamic range, but something about the light meter on this hit the, the metering perfectly. And these photos are just really special to me. The, the dark blacks and the, the highlights blown out, it's just, it's, a, it's really special. Really happy with how these all turned out. It was also funny because there were so many people shooting digital images here that I would hear a wave come and I would watch it like crash against the wall and I would just hear all these shutters going like brrrr, like firing off behind me. And then I would just be waiting for that one frame where I could like pull my leaf shutter and get one picture while the person next to me had just taken like 3000. So that was kind of an interesting dynamic as far as photographing this event. This is my friend Rod. He's an incredible photographer and now cinematographer. He's been doing a lot of really cool reels. So if you wanna check out his work, head over to his Instagram. Uh, it's linked down below and you can go check out his work. It's incredible. Go give it a watch. Once we left Cape Disappointment, we went back to this place called South Bay Wild Seafood Market and Restaurant, and I got really good fish and chips, and Brian got these insane tacos that I kind of regret not getting. They were very good, gonna have to go back. And this is the Flavel House Museum. And this house was the home of Captain George Flavel from 1823 to 1893, one of Astoria's most influential citizens in the late 1800s. And it's one of the most beautiful homes in the whole town of Astoria. So I had to tip pull over and take some photos of it while we were there. We also found this really cool view overlooking all of the city of Astoria with the Columbia River in the background there. The mountains in the distance are actually Washington and we are on the Oregon side looking towards Washington North and basically just sat here, took some photos of the staircase leading down to the city of Astoria. While we were out here, this sweet lady heard us taking photos and asked if I wanted to come in her backyard and photograph some of Astoria from a little bit of a different angle. So I went back there. That was great. Okay. Be real careful. Okay, I will. And kind of took in this beautiful home that she let us kind of go back there and take some photos. So that was really fun. This person just let us come in their backyard and take photos. Beautiful. Today we went and shot the King Tide at um, Cape Disappointment, which, which contrary to popular belief, it was not a disappointment. Me and Brian packed up and it was time to drive all the way back to Portland, Oregon. 
Uh, so if you're looking to ever do a trip like this, it really was just like a two hour drive there. We left pretty early in the morning and then we got back before the sun went down. And it was definitely worth the trip. It makes me want to do trips like this more often. And I love the photos that I got with the Mamiya 72. Really special shooting that camera all over the city. And and the it performs in such different conditions so well. So if you're ever looking for a medium format camera and you want to make the jump and shoot, shoot uh, shooting specifically medium format or maybe only medium format, definitely look into this camera. It's, it's really pricey right now, but for what you get, it's hard, it's hard to beat that for sure. So thank you guys so much for watching that video. I greatly appreciate you checking this out. If you have any questions about the Mamiya 7 II, leave them down below. I'll get back to you or about the King Tide or the Sony FX3 that all this video was shot on. Thank you again for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.